Um, and last Sunday was a very special Sunday. Why? Does anybody remember what was last Sunday? Pentecost. So we celebrated and remembered Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, filled the believers. Uh, for those of you who don't know the story, after Jesus ascended to heaven, the, 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 the believers, they gathered in a room, and like we were seeing today, fire and wind came down in that room, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was such a great time, and they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. A significant event, but what? Far from the end of the story. Far from the end. What excites me about Pentecost is actually what happens after Pentecost. What happens next? You see, the Holy Spirit didn't just stay in that room. But the Holy Spirit was with the believers, empowered the believers, walking with the believers. And we see spirit-filled believers empowered by God. We see spirit-filled believers becoming more like Jesus, doing the work of Jesus, living a powerful, powerful life. You see what happens after Pentecost. Why does this story excite me? Because we are a continuation of that story. And we have the same spirit that filled that room. Thank you, Jesus. We have the same spirit. The same spirit is empowering us to, to live powerful lives. But friends, let me tell you, infilling of the Holy Spirit is fantastic. We need to be spirit-filled. But let me tell you, we also, also need to be spirit-led. We also need to walk with the Spirit step by step, decision by decision, day to day. And that's what came after the Pentecost. That's what we see in the Bible, in the book of Acts, the, the early church. It's, it's painted with scriptures and stories of, of believers who were filled and led by the Holy Spirit to, to impact the world for Jesus. You see, growing up in the Christian context, I, so if you don't know, I am the son of Pastor Jerry. If you don't know Pastor Jerry, he's the founder of this church. He's not here right now, so I can say whatever I want about him. <laughs> Is he watching? I don't know. I take that back. Strike it from the record. But uh, I grew up in the Christian church. So at a young age, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and it was fantastic. And, I, and it changed me. It marked me. I remember coming to church and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And as I grew older and, and I came to events like we had the other day, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was infilled. God was doing something inside of me. But, but as I grew up and, and, and I came more busy and things started to change in my life, I was filled with the Holy Spirit on Sunday. But then on Monday when my alarm went off, I said, oh, wait. It's... I still got to go to work. <laughs> I still got to wake up. I still got to drive that long, long commute. I still got to go to that meeting. I still got to do all these different things. And, and then I, I, I start to realize, like, where was that powerful life that I saw in the Bible? Where, where was that powerful life? You see, I was filled with the, the fire of God. The spirit was in my belly. And, and then on Monday in the weeks to come, I, I said, was I living like the believers in the Bible? Where was that powerful life I saw and read about after Pentecost? A time would pass and the buzz you know the Holy Spirit buzz, like that's the best buzz. If you want to buzz, get the Holy Spirit. The buzz of the Holy Spirit started to fade away. And, and I, I would wrestle and say, isn't my life supposed to change? Like isn't there supposed to be something that happens to me? It's then I realize that yes, being filled with the Spirit is needed. 
But what comes after is just important. The obedience in following the Spirit. It's just as important to realize that we are Spirit-filled, but then we must be Spirit-led. It's important to know that, hey, I have a part to play in all of this. I have decisions I need to make. You see, as I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was still waiting for God to do something else, not realizing that he already gave me all that I need. What I needed to do was then follow the Spirit. What I needed to do was to Abide and, and change, change the direction, change some things in my life as the Spirit led me, as the Spirit prompted me, as the Spirit brought stuff up in my life in the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, outside of this place, as the Spirit was moving on the regular days, not the Sunday, I needed to follow. I needed to obey. I needed to walk in step with the Spirit. You see, friends, the Holy Spirit empowers us to live the life Jesus designed for us. He empowers us, he helps us, but we still have the decision and free will to obey, to follow. We still have the decision to open up our lives to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The challenge and encouragement I'm bringing to us today as a church is to live with the Spirit, to follow the Spirit. Follow the guiding, walk step by step with the Spirit as as our guide. And we're gonna unpack that today. What does it mean to live with the Spirit? What does it mean to constantly be sowing in the Spirit? And we'll encourage one another, because that's what we're here for as a family. We'll encourage one another to keep going, Encourage one another, consistently so in the Spirit. Why? Why is this so important? Why is following the Holy Spirit so important? Let me tell you. It's so important because you see, Jesus, who is our goal, who is our love, the Spirit following him will lead you to Jesus. Following the Spirit will help you abide in Jesus. The Spirit is the one who is our helper to to do what Jesus has called us to do. See, if we don't have the Spirit, if we don't follow the Spirit, we will miss what God designed for us in our life. It's important that we follow the Spirit, that, that we realize He empowers us to change our life, that He fills us and empowers us to actually live like Jesus lived. In short, following the Spirit will allow us and and reveal to us more about Jesus so we can fall more in love with him. The Spirit will also change us to become more like Jesus. And as we change and become more like Jesus, the Spirit then empowers us to live like Jesus. That powerful life that we see in scripture. The spirit is calling, the spirit is leading, the spirit is speaking in our lives. Jesus gives us the spirit, he is with us, he is with us, he is with us. Will we walk step by step with him? That's the question we're talking about today. My prayer as a Jesus-centered church is that we will follow the Spirit, live by the Spirit. Are you with me? So let's grab our Bibles. If you have your Bibles with you today, we're gonna study from the book of Galatians. We're gonna read from Galatians 6, 7 to 10. And and here, Paul is outlining to the Galatians the practical living uh, and, and nature of walking with the Spirit. This is what it says in Galatians 6, seven to 10, it says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, Let us do good 
to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word speaks to us. We thank you, God, Lord Jesus, that you're continuing to just speak to us and we just open up our hearts to receive you. Holy Spirit, we pray that you lead us, you guide us, you be in our midst. Open our ears to hear. Still us right now. I pray for the, the busyness of our mind, that we'd open our mind and open our ears, open our heart to hear what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're reading from Galatians, and in the letter of, of Galatians, Paul is giving them a practical example of living with the Spirit. And we're not surprised that Paul ends the letter this way, with this type of encouragement. Because you see, the, the whole book of Galatians is a letter that outlines and reminds the Galatians of the freedom and the empowerment that the Spirit gives them through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, the Galatians, they were struggling. They were struggling that, you know, Jesus freed them from living under the law. They were struggling with the fact that they were to live by grace. They were still believing, like some people may be believing here today, that good works will save you. I'll tell you, friends, the Bible says that good works doesn't save you. Only Jesus will save you. But, but the Galatians, that's what they were taught. That's what they were learning, that the, they needed to follow the law, and they were having a hard time following this. They thought, if I just did more good, if, if the Gentiles were just, just follow what we're doing, then they will be saved. And Paul was saying, no, that's not how it is. It's only through faith in Jesus that you're saved. No good work will save you. No one can earn salvation. It's only a gift of grace through Jesus Christ. He paid for your sin. He cleansed you. He, he made you right and heir before God. You are a child of God. But wait, does this mean that because Jesus saves me and because I'm no longer under the rules and the law that I was talking about, that I can do whatever I want? Paul says, no, 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 no. Uh, any Christians here can do whatever they want? <laughs> you passed. No, 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 no. Why? Because he says you don't have the law. But he says live by the Spirit. You see, living by the Spirit will actually produce in you the righteousness, will actually help you live righteously right before God. He says don't live by this, the flesh, live by the Spirit. And that's what he's talking about as he ends this letter, that we are to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And he consistently speaks about this over and over. Spirit versus flesh. Spirit versus flesh. And it's important to know this truth, that, that beyond the physical, there is a spiritual. And beyond here, there is an ongoing battle between our flesh and our spirit. And that there is this, this opposition that we face every single day, every decision, where we must realize that this is happening. And that's what we gotta talk about first. And we gotta understand in walking with the Spirit that there is opposition. That there is a direct conflict with, with following the Spirit. Why is following the Spirit not so easy? Because there is the flesh. Because there is something an opposition in our lives, an ongoing conflict between flesh and spirit. Let's read our verse again, Galatians 6, 7, 8 says, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Flesh versus spirit, flesh versus spirit. Throughout Galatians, he talks about it, but not just through Galatians, but all over Scripture, all over Paul's letters. He says in Galatians 5, 16, and 18, see this, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other 
so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under that law. Paul says that there's a direct conflict, a direct opposition, a d- contrary to one another. They're not in agreement with one another. So if I try to walk in the Spirit, there is the flesh. They're, they're, they're opposite directions. But what is that flesh? Is the body bad? No, the body is not evil. God created your body. I don't know about the fat in your body. I think that part is evil. I don't know. I'm going to talk to God when I get up there and say, was the fat evil? I think it was evil. Um, Your body isn't evil. When we talk about flesh, it's the, the, the sinful nature it's the desires that, that are not godly that we have because we're fallen. We're fallen people. We have these desires inside of us. That's the flesh. It's the lust, the jealousy, the unforgive, unforgiveness. It's the gluttony. It's the five plates at the buffet. Am I right? It's the desires of the flesh. Can I be honest with you, church? Can, can I be, I know I'm a pastor, but can I tell you something? Make sure you don't tell Pastor Jerry. I still too have ungodly desires. I think we all still have ungodly desires. Do we act on them? That's the question. But, but we all still want to cut off that person who cut us off. Right? We all, we all do want to seek revenge. We all have ungodly desires. But are we hopeless? No. Why? We have the spirit. The spirit that is contrary to the flesh. The spirit who empowers us to live with God. Both of them are present in our everyday life, happening every day in the spiritual. I want you to picture this. I want you to know that this is happening every single moment. The flesh versus the spirit. So what does this look like? I want to illustrate it to you. So I'm going to pull up two volunteers. I don't know if they're volunteers because they work here, but I'm going to call up Belle and Allie to come help me. I was was talking to them, and I said, do you want to volunteer, huh? (laughs) Yeah, okay, great, great. I want to illustrate this to you because we can't see what's happening, right? It's, it's hard for us to see what's happening in the spiritual, okay? So I'm going to give you the mic, and you're just going to share about the God. I'm kidding. You're not going to preach. <laughs> okay. Can everybody see this, right? So Allie has volunteered to be the flesh. And, oh, 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 oh. and uh, Belle has volunteered to be the spirit, okay? Are you with me? Okay, so this is what's happening in the spirit, spiritual realm. What's happening is this, that say, for instance, the, that drum booth there is abiding in God. It's, it, it's God's desire for me, how he has planned me, how he has positioned, all that he has created me to become, right? In our life, we have the flesh that tempts us away from that. And, and before Jesus came, there was, there was a grip on us. No matter, okay, you can, oh, just, I, gotta, I still got to preach. Uh, you, no matter how hard I try to, to do right, no matter how try, I, I, I try to be righteous, I just, I, I just follow my flesh. Because there's this hold, there's... <laughs> oh gosh. Oh my goodness, okay. Because there's this hold on me. I can't, uh, even if you put the rules there, even if you, the rules would just actually make me want to go more this way, even if you put the law there, it, as much as I try, maybe I might get closer, but I will fall back. But then Jesus comes. And the hold of sin, oh, thank you, Jesus. The hold of sin is gone. And what happens? The, fl- the Spirit comes. And now is guiding me, teaching me. Right? But, so, wait, watch this. So, 
sin has no more hold on me because of Jesus, right? Look at the verse, Romans 7, 5 to 6. It says, when we were controlled by our sinful nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way, say new way, way. of living in the spirit. I want you to catch this. The, The hold of sin is gone, but does the flesh go away? No. The difference is is that the power over me is gone. I am now set free, but what does freedom mean? Friends, when a criminal is released from jail, do we know they're gonna do good? Do Do we know they're gonna do wrong? Freedom means that there is a choice. So what happens is, is the flesh is still there and the spirit is also still there. What, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the decision we have. Will we follow the flesh or will we follow the spirit? That's what freedom is, the decision. But it's up to us to make that decision. Thank you, Jorval. The question, will you sow into your flesh or will you sow into your spirit? That's the question. And we know, Paul writes in Galatians 5, the results of the flesh. He says this, Galatians 5, 19 to 21. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I said before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. The tough question. You see, if if we read the results of sowing in the flesh and we see them in our life, the reality is is that we're most likely sowing in the flesh. And when I read this list and I read all those things, I say, oh, ouch! I say, oh, ouch! That's me. I see that in my life. And, and, And we're not putting this to to guilt us or shame us, but we're putting it to bring awareness to us that actually why this is resulting in our life is because we have been sowing in the flesh. So it puts the question in our minds, what are we watching? What are we spending our time on? What, what, What actions do we have? What are we sowing in our life? Where are we sowing in our life. And Paul says that sowing in these things will reap destruction. Let's read that verse again. It says, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. You know, destruction, it's that internal decay, it's that corruption from within. It's that inside of you where you feel like things are just not right. That things are just not together. It's just corrupted. It's eroding inside of you. And some of you might feel like that today. Could it be we're sowing in the flesh? Our verse says, it says, God cannot be mocked. If if you sow in the flesh, you will reap destruction. And friends, I'll tell you, Jesus will forgive you. Jesus will set you free. But there are consequences to sin. I'll tell you. As your pastor, I have to tell you, there are consequences to sin. Say, friend, I can lie and, and, and ask for forgiveness, be forgiven, but that breaks trust. I, still got, I have broken trust somewhere. I still got to deal with the implications of what I've done. You see, I could be gluttonous. I could have the five plates of buffet. Amen. 
but I got to deal with the result of my health. God could forgive me, I could repent. You see, I can be set free from watching pornography and lustful desires. He can forgive me, but what is the implication to my marriage? That's the question. There's a result. There are consequences. Somebody said this, the body keeps score of what's happening. You know, there's, 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 You sow and you reap. Yes, you are forgiven. Yes, you are set free. But there are still implications to what you've done. There are consequences. So don't sow in the flesh, but what? Sow in the spirit. That's the other side of this. Sow your time, your energy, your effort, your body into what pleases the spirit. Because those are the things of God. They're what what pleases Jesus. They they are the things of Jesus. What do we know? We know that time will always elapse. Time will never stop. What else do we know? We know that energy, your energy will always be spent. Even if you're resting, there's energy that's been given. What do we know? Your heart is always gonna love something. We know all of these things, they don't turn off. You see, your mind will always think. So the question isn't, am I sowing? The question is, what am I sowing into? The flesh or the spirit? Am I giving my time, my energy, all all the things, my, my effort into the things of the flesh, or am I giving it to the spirit? Friends, let us walk with the spirit. Let us sow in the spirit. Why? I talked about this earlier, the results of sowing in the spirit. I'll tell you, when you sow in the spirit, you follow him, you filled by him, you follow his leading, you will know more of Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads you to Jesus. You will also, I'll tell you this, the people who I've seen that are spirit-filled, spirit-led, they become more like Jesus. Something happens on the inside. And I'll tell you this as well. When you sow in the Spirit and walk by the Spirit, what happens in your life is you start to live like Jesus. You start to live that powerful life that you've been praying for. God, change my environment. You say, I gotta change you first. You start to see and, and, and live and move like Jesus. So we're gonna take some time to outline those so that we know why? And so we can pull on these things when the flesh tempts us that we can pull on I, the results of sowing in the Spirit. And the first, which I love, is that the following the Spirit, being filled by the Spirit, results into us knowing more of Jesus. The Spirit will lead us to the lover of our souls. The Spirit will lead us to know more of Jesus' heart. He will help us really know who the one we are faithful to. He will remind us of God's faithfulness, Jesus' faithfulness. He will open our minds to see who he really is, illuminate the information that, that you're consuming. He'll make it alive so that we can know Jesus. It says in the Bible that the Spirit testifies about Jesus. John 15, 26, when the advocate comes whom I will send to you, this is Jesus talking from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from my Father, he will testify about me. See, we must know the Holy Spirit leads us to things of Jesus. That was Jesus sending the Holy Spirit, giving the Holy Spirit. Why? So that we can know more about him. So that we wouldn't be left by trying to figure it all out on ourselves, but there would be someone guiding us, someone teaching us, someone showing us who he really is. I love this. John 16, 12 to 15. Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. 
All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. He will make us know Jesus more. He will. You know how many people I've been talking to where, you know, sometimes I'm sharing about my faith and, and yes, I study the Bible and all that stuff, but then some of the things they're sharing to me, I say, wow, how could you know that level of just opening their heart to the Holy Spirit's leading and letting the word of God be illuminated. Amen. They're not just reading words, but the Holy Spirit is impressing to them, who is this Jesus? See, friends, you want to know Jesus more so into the Spirit because he will teach you more of Jesus. Some of us might be stuck in our faith, reading the Bible, and there's nothing coming, nothing <laughs> You know, there's nothing coming from the Bible. You're reading and reading, you're like, but I'm not getting anything from it. Pause. Invite the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Ask the Holy Spirit, what is this? What are you saying about Jesus? What, what is this? And the Holy Spirit will come and lead you to who he is. That's the result of the Holy Spirit. The other one is this. We become more like Jesus. Someone say amen. amen. You guys don't want to look like Jesus, huh? Someone say amen. amen. Galatians 5, 26 says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. You see, as we sow in the Spirit, as we are led by the Spirit, consistently follow him, consistently filled by him, what happens? The fruit of the Spirit come inside of us and we become more like Jesus. You see, all of the, the traits there describe Jesus. They describe who he is, his nature. All of those things are Jesus. And what happens is he comes and he, and he bears fruit in our life. That's like the ultimate list, right? That list that we quote all the time, love, joy, peace. Like that is like, if I could have all those at once, Wow. You ever try to produce these things on your own? Anybody, anybody ever try to, you know, produce patience, you know, manufactured patience? You know, that, I, I don't know about you, but in your house, uh, so Rachel and I always get ready. I, I, didn't, I didn't get this approved, so I don't know if she's gonna, she's not here, right? But Rachel and I always get ready, and before we, before we leave, it's like, I don't know what it is. Maybe the Spirit is guiding Rachel, but she always has to go back inside the house. Like, okay, let's go. Okay, I'm ready. I'm putting on my shoes, getting ready. Oh, wait. Oh, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later. I said, are we leaving? And I, I tell her I'm patient, but this is how I wait. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> are we going yet? Friends, that's not patience. That's, trying, that's us trying to produce our own patience. What about self-control? You ever try to manufacture that on your own? You're like, I'm gonna do all, I'm gonna read all of the books. I'm gonna do all the, the, the list of things that I need to do to change my life, and I'm gonna follow it A, B, and C, and what do you find? You don't read the book. <laughs> what do you find? It's, you're trying to manufacture your own self-discipline. It doesn't come from a deep place, and all of a sudden, it starts to change, and all of a sudden that self-discipline starts to waver away because it doesn't come from within. What about the ultimate love, joy, and peace? The things in the world we are so desperately trying to achieve. To know love, to have love, to have joy, to have peace, I'll tell you, there are so many people in the world trying to get these things. 
If only I could be loved. If only I could experience the love of my life. If only I was just happy. If only I had the sense that there was hope in my life. If only I had peace. We find people trying to manufacture all of these things, but they're, they end up lost. Let me tell you, friend, it's because it's not coming from a deep place. These things are from God. It's only through the Holy Spirit that we have eternal fruit. It's only from the Holy Spirit that we bear these things to know love, to give love, to have peace, to have joy. So we need to sow in the Spirit. And I've seen that personally in my life as I grew up, even in the faith. You know, I, I just found that as I continued to fill the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to lead me, I started to notice myself change. You can ask my mom. She, she, she thinks I, I have a hot temper or she used to, I don't know what she thinks anymore. But um, <laughs> she's like, oh, you got a hot temper. But I submitted it to the Holy Spirit. If you're watching online, that was a witness. That was my mom who said amen. But the result of the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, is I began to change. That that, that, the the self-control came from within. You see, the love for people, I tell you this, I share this all the time, it's not natural for me to be in relationship and all those things. But, But as I spend time with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's love produces inside of me. You see, when we walk with the Holy Spirit, when we we go through these situations and we call on him and what he reminds us the words of Jesus, he reminds us the things of Jesus, he reminds us of what God says in this situation, what Jesus says in this situation. So when I'm impatient, waiting for my wife, he reminds me of what Jesus says. He brings that truth in my life and he he starts to bear the fruit. And I start to follow him. How? By aligning my emotions, my actions, everything I have to him. And I start to change. I start to change from within. I start to become like Jesus. How, do, how does this happen? That's why it's so important we walk in step. At the end of the, that verse, with all, listing of all of the, the, the attributes, the, the fruit of the Spirit, at the end of that, what happens? He says, I love what Paul says. He says, so there, walk in step with the Spirit. He says, so walk in step with the Spirit. And that's written in the Greek present tense where it's like, it means it's ongoing, it's continual, it's habitual. There's this cadence. There's this walking in step where he moves the right foot, I move the right foot. He moves the left foot, I move the left foot. There's this exact rhythm, this exact tempo that we walk together in. That's walking by the Spirit. But friends, let me tell you, can you see the Holy Spirit? No. So what happens? Don't laugh at me because this is the only thing I have, okay? This is what Belle gave me, okay? Can we walk with the Spirit? No, right? So what happens? You can't see, (laughs) right? You can't see the Spirit. So what happens? I got to listen. I'm still walking step by step, but I got to ask. I got to listen. I got to talk. I I can't just go. I got to make space See, that's what following in step with the Spirit entails. It takes asking, following, pausing, redirecting to walk in step with the Spirit. Friends, can I testify? This this might be your testimony too. I am not the same person I was when I met Jesus. I, I, am, I, I don't look the same that I look when I met Jesus. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not by my strength. It's not by things I'm trying to manufacture and produce in my life, but it's by the spirit and power of the spirit of God. 
And he has changed me as he leads me to the things of Jesus. It's sowing in the spirit. We become more like him. And the, the other result is we live like him, live like Jesus. That's the last result. You see, when we start to change, like, to become more like Jesus, what starts to happen? We start to live like Jesus. We start to see what Jesus sees. We, we, we start to do the good work like him. We, we are compelled to start doing good because that's what's being produced inside of us. I have never met a spirit-filled, spirit-led person who doesn't do good work. I haven't met a spirit-filled, spirit-led person who doesn't affect the environment around them. You see, because the Holy Spirit produces and, and it results into us living like Jesus and that means we are out in the world doing good work. We do good work because love, we know love takes a form of action. Kindness takes a form of action. You know, these fruit are not just for ourselves, but it starts to change us, to impact the world around us. The early church, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were full of good works. Full of it. Let's read Acts 2, 42 to 47, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Wow, what a church. Imagine reading a, a church bio like that. Oh man, I'm there and I'm believing that is CLC. Amen. But I read this passage. I read all of the good work and what do I see? I see all the fruit of the Spirit resulting into good work. I see believers who are changed on the inside living like Jesus. What a church! We also know that the infilling of the Holy Spirit you know, causes us to witness. Acts 4.31 says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. See, there is a result. There's a way of living that happens when we sow in the Spirit and follow the Spirit. And the, the Holy Spirit causes us, it, it, it transforms us, and then we start to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world around us, doing the good work of Jesus. We know this in our verse that we, we, we look at, Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Good work, good work. Jesus is good work. But it's important to note that the Holy Spirit, he brings us to the good work of Jesus. Because friends, there is, sadly enough, the world's definition of good sometimes always isn't the, 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 Jesus' definition of good. Sometimes the world's definition of good isn't like Jesus' definition of good. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to lead us to Jesus' is good. One of the things that comes to mind is, is, you know, the world says, you know, sex before marriage. Yes, you need, to, you need to, you know, sexually encounter your partner. They say, test the car before you buy it. I don't know why some people are blushing here, but uh, <laughs> anyways, that's what they say, right? But that's not Jesus is good. And there are so many things in the world today right now where, where the world says, that is good, and Jesus says, that's not my good. That's why if you just keep trying to follow the law right now, the law might not align to God's word. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us to the good work of Jesus. 
So continue, so in the spirit. Do not grow weary in doing good that Jesus designed for you, the good that the world needs as they need Jesus, as they need his hands and feet operating in this world today. Friends, do not grow That's it within our passage today. Galatians 6, 9 to 10, it says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Do not grow weary step by step. Keep sowing in the spirit. Fight weariness, how? By filling yourself with the spirit. Consistently fill yourself with the Spirit so you can consistently do good. Finish the race God laid out for you well. How? By ensuring that your Spirit filled is Spirit led. You know, I've been in ministry for a while, and even in the news, you'll, you'll start to notice that people are falling away from the faith. People who've run long races. People who are walking away from their faith. People who have grown weary in doing good. See, they left ministry, they burned out. Burned out on good things? How does that make sense? But they did, they burned out. And I read this verse and it, it breaks my heart. It, it breaks my heart because, friends, what, what I've noticed to the ones personally who have been in my life, what I've noticed is that maybe they didn't start this way, but they ended this way where, where how they were running the race didn't measure up to how God wanted them to run the race. You see, they grew weary in doing good because they skipped the part of the Holy Spirit. They they skipped the first parts of the verse that we just talked about and they, they went straight to good. And they kept doing good work, good work, good work. But friends, if you keep giving and nothing is filling you, you will be empty. That's the weariness. It's the losing of heart. It's the discouragement. Friends, a break from ministry won't fill your cup. A vacation won't fill your cup with the things of the Spirit. What do we need to do? Fight weariness. How? By sowing in the Spirit. Sowing in the Spirit. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Don't grow weary Refuse to grow weary by protecting and sowing in the Spirit. Keep on sowing so that you remain healthy, so that you can do the good work that Jesus laid out for you. You know, at the end of the verse, it says, I was reading it and I said, Huh? It says, Do good to all people. Say, All people, especially those who are believers. He said, take every opportunity. I will be the first to say, that is too hard. All, all people? Everybody? You mean I, I, gotta, do, I gotta help everybody move? <laughs> all people? It's just too hard without the Holy Spirit. I just don't have enough without the Holy Spirit. That's why God didn't design it that way. God didn't just leave you with no one. He gave you the helper to help you so that you do not grow weary in doing good. Can I encourage you today, friend? Do not give up. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't give up. Don't give up. 
Don't grow weary in doing good. Fill your cup, fill your cup, fill your cup. Why? Because in the proper time, at the proper time, meaning not your friend's time, not your, the, the Instagram followers' time, not anybody else's time, but your time. In your time, in God's ordained time for me, you will receive a harvest. Friends, God cannot be mocked. So in the spirit. And you will reap eternal life. A harvest you can't take away. So in the spirit. So I'm just going to quickly, how, how, how do I sow in the spirit? Paul, I, I want to sow in the spirit. How do I do it? I want to share with you ways to sow in the Spirit, which are ways that you know, but things that we need to talk about. The first is you need to pray and listen. Build your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Build your relationship by sowing time and energy. Pray to the Holy Spirit and then listen. Someone say, listen. Listen Listen to what he's teaching you. Make time to not just talk, but to listen. Listen. Ask him. He is our teacher. He is our guide. He will illuminate to you. If you're going through a problem in your life right now, you can't figure it out. Ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate to you. He will guide you to the words of Jesus. John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. See, the Spirit of God knows the deep things of God. We don't, we don't know the deep things of God. We don't, but the Spirit does. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11 says, these are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit t- searches all things, even the deep things of God. For, whoever, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So pray and then Listen. Make space for the Holy Spirit to talk to you. Make space for the Holy Spirit to, to teach you. You're like, oh, oh, Paul, but the Holy Spirit's not talking to me. The Holy Spirit's not speaking to me. Friend, could it be that your mind is just too busy to hear what the Spirit is saying? You know, Rachel always gets mad at me, okay? So she could be talking to me, like, right here, and, like, talking, like, not, like, Hey, Paul, uh, like full on talking to me. If I'm on my phone, even if she's talking clear and loud, what happens? I can't hear her. But she's talking. But she's speaking. The thing is, my mind is too busy. I have no space to think about what she's telling me, to process what she's saying. He, he's speaking. But have we taken time to process what he's saying. That is praying and listening. So make space, pray, and then pray and also ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. You know, don't just wait for a conference, don't just wait for the laying of hands, I love that stuff, but friends, be in your room and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. When was the last time you came to the Holy Spirit and said, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, I need you. Fill me. Because the Bible says that you ask and you will receive. So it says in Luke 11, 13, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The other thing, set your mind on what the Spirit desires. The conflict between the battle between between flesh and spirit starts in your mind. We know that the the thoughts that we have start to control our life. It starts to become the way that we live. What we meditate on, we slowly start to become. In Romans 8, he says, put your mind on things of the spirit. He says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. See, your mind plays a big role. If you are entertaining lustful thoughts, 
you will watch pornography. Like if you're thinking about it all the time, that's what you will become. If, you, if you're thinking about, about uh, how much a person has failed you, if you're thinking about all the negative things of a person, you will begin to hate them. If, if you are entertaining and thinking about, oh, that person has this, you're constantly comparing or, think, or looking at what other, other people have, you will become jealous. You will. If you're always thinking about yourself, you will become selfish. It's your thoughts. Our minds don't stop thinking. If, in fact, if your mind stops thinking, I think that you should go get that checked because your, <laughs> your mind should always be thinking, right? It doesn't turn off. Your mind doesn't stop thinking. So instead of thinking and sowing your thoughts and things of the flesh, think about things of the spirit, the godly things. Someone once said, if you can't turn off the TV, change the channel. To the millennials and gen, just swipe the story. Don't put your mind on these things. Philippians 4.8 says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Sow your, 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 your mind into these things. They are the things of God. Fill your mind with the word. It is the thing of God. Craig Rochelle from Life Church, he, he quoted this from his book. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. The last thing is fasting. One of the best ways to make us aware of the spirit and its desires is to cut off something in your life that your flesh is tied to and then reinvest and sow that into the spirit. You see, the time and energy or effort that you have into food, entertainment, your desires, all those things that are fleshly, they may not be bad, but, but reinvest those into the Spirit. Re, reinvest them in Luke 4. It's a famous passage of Jesus who goes in the wilderness. And, and Jesus who, who is, he goes and he gets tempted by, G, by the devil. And we can view him as weak at the time. The Bible says that he was fasted. He fasted and for 40 days he, he had no food. And we can view him as weak at the time, but we see how the Spirit actually empowered him. We see his strength in withstanding the tempting of Satan. Every test that Satan threw at him withstood. Everything that, that Satan was saying, oh, the word says this, he could realign it back. Why? I believe because he was full of the Spirit. Luke 4, 1 to 2 says, Jesus, full of the Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. We see here Jesus full of the Spirit as he denied his flesh. He demonstrates the power of fasting, the power of being so in tune with the Spirit that you can withstand the desires of the flesh and the temptation of the devil. In the same way, church, we too should fast. We too should intentionally break the cycle of flesh, the, the, the control that the flesh has over us and make room for the Spirit to guide us. This is something I know in my life that I'm, I'm trying harder to do. You know, something that, you know, if you haven't fasted before, don't think, oh, I'm not a good Christian. No, I think all of us are trying to do better. And it's something in my life that I'm trying because I know there is power. I know there is power in building up my spirit. So I want to encourage you to fast, intentionally Sow what was originally given to the flesh and sow it into the spirit. Friends, these are just some ways to sow in the spirit. You'll find that life doesn't change drastically. You know, you're still gonna have to wake up. You're still gonna have to go on your commute. You're still gonna have to drive and, and you're still gonna have to pay the price of gas, right? <laughs> it's still gonna happen. 
but you'll find that you'll come to know Jesus. You'll find that your character will change. You'll find that the environment around you changes, that you're actually compelled to help. You're compelled to do good work. You're compelled. What do I know to be true? When, when your life is following the Spirit, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. As you move empowered, walking step by step with the Spirit. And your relationship with Jesus will be full. It'll be easier to abide in him. Your character will, will change. Your life will change. If we just follow the spirit day by day. As I close, I want to say, are you walking with the spirit? Are you fully aligned to the spirit can you say that you have been sowing in the Spirit? Can you identify that you have been sowing in the Spirit? Do you see the fruit in your life? Or on the other side, are you on a path of destruction? Do you see the results of what's happening in your life? Do you see that list and say, ouch, that's me? These are the hard questions that we gotta ask ourselves because the Holy Spirit is here. It's our decision to walk in step with him. Maybe this is your first time you heard about Jesus. Maybe you're, you're hearing about Jesus and I wanna tell you that good works will not save you. Only Jesus will save you and you are not, there is no sin too big for Jesus. And that he's come and removed the power of sin over our life so that we can walk with the spirit, be free and experience a life full of joy, peace, love, patience, all the things that we're searching for in life that he has for you. I wanna say he invites you to know him through the spirit.